Good morning, everybody. All right, we will find our places and we will get started. Thank you all for um, thank you all for praying yesterday. If you got the text message an, uh, announcement that went out, Mike appreciates your prayers. Mike, we are thankful that the Lord had His protective hand on you. So praise God for that. And keep praying for Nate Sumi. You got the you probably got the message that Nate fell off a ladder yesterday, and we want to be praying for him. He is okay. He's got a long recovery ahead, but he's good. And um, just wanted to let you know, I already had at least one person in the church say they wanted to reach out and be an encouragement to him, and that means a lot. So, uh, and Mike shared with me uh, just that how awesome it's been to see when somebody has a need or trouble that the church family just kind of rallies around that person. And so we're so thankful for that. I walked around this morning as we got ready and um, just uh, saw people fellowshipping and hugging and it's uh, we're here for the Lord and we're here for each other. Amen, church. And it's been we have had we have had some amazing things happening in our church the last few weeks. Um, people responding to the gospel almost each week. New people coming. It's exciting to be part of what God's doing, isn't it? It's just I'm just I'm fired up to be here today to see what God has for us. I'm excited to sing the songs that Aaron's picked out for us today. You know something? The Bible says that God has a house. Do you believe that, that God has a house? But this building is not the house of God. The Bible says that you are the house of the Lord. You are the habitation of God. So he's got some scripture for us today to set our hearts. And then we're going to stand and we are going to sing with all of our might to the Lord. We're going to give him the glory. We're going to give him the honor. If you are glad to be in the house of the Lord today, can you say amen? Amen. Praise God. Aaron. Let's stand together as we get ready to sing. The Bible tells us in Psalm 122, verse number one, and then we'll look at Psalm 16. But it says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And then Psalm 16, 11, thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. I feel like we're gonna sing we're gonna sing House of the Lord, and I feel like it's appropriate to the Spirit this morning that there is joy in the House of the Lord this morning.
telling you, it's something about standing up here and listening to this front row kid sing. And you can actually probably hear it in the back. Um, I saw some looks from my brother-in-law, Lane, because Eli is just screaming it out. It sounds great. Because there's joy in the house of the Lord. It doesn't matter if you're four years old, 40 years old, or 84 years old. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Come Christians, join and sing. Hallelujah. Amen. sing a song called Be Still My Soul. We introduced it last year and the song reminds us of the hope that we have in our Lord Jesus Christ.
and for your grace. Lord, we ask that you bless our service today in a very great way. We've really come, Lord, first and foremost for you. We've come to worship you, not only with our singing and our giving, but our attentiveness to the preaching of your word. Let our hearts be in tune with yours. For those watching on the live stream today, Lord, we pray that they'd sense your presence there as well. And those at work, help them to sense your presence at the workplace. We're blessed today, Lord. Meet with us. Help us to leave today sensing that you've accomplished the very purpose for which you have called us here. In Jesus' name, we ask and pray all of these things. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Can you see? Well, good morning once again. I just want to share a few things with you. First of all, if you are new or even if you're a regular part of our church, I want you to just take advantage of the connection card. There should be one near you or somebody may have given you one, but they're usually in the seat backs. But the connection card is an opportunity for us to get to know you a little bit better and to pray for you and to keep you up to date with things that are happening in our church. So um, especially if you're new, we'd love to get to know you. And we're so glad that you're here today. Thank you. And for our church family, share a prayer request. If there's a way that we can be praying for you, we want to do that. So take a minute, fill the connection card out, and you can place this in the box on the way in or out of the service this morning. But we're so glad that you are here. If you uh, need a bulletin, please put your hand up. Our ushers are coming by right now with with uh, extra copies of the bulletin. It's got a, the sermon notes in it today as well. So you'll definitely get more out of the service. Just James is going to work his way the front to the back. So just hold your hand up and we'll make sure that you get one. Um, but today we have a few special th things happening. And uh, well, first of all, um, we enjoyed uh, our music team this morning. And this was Trinity's last Sunday on the music team because this is her last Sunday with us before her wedding and taking off to um, Florida. And we're so excited for her. And um, we're gonna, we've got a little something special for you at the end. So we're so thankful. Oh, now she's like, oh boy, what is it? But we're, um, we're sending her off today and she's been such a blessing to our church. And um, so that's, that's a special part of the service coming up a little bit later. But if you, uh, if you do have your bulletin, just to see what's happening in the church, we have a whole schedule of life group events. These are ways for you to get connected with different people in the church and similar life stages and different opportunities. Uh, we're 
supposed to have our family uh, buck night tonight. We'll talk, get with Aaron on what the plan is for that if the weather holds off. But we've got, uh, we've got that planned. And then we have a couple of men's and ladies' fellowships planning uh, planned. So uh, on June the 23rd, the men are going to meet up at uh, Travis Willett's house. That's Sunday night, 5 o'clock. And... Um, you know you're in the right church when you got an image like that up there. I tell you what. So just it's okay. It's going to be okay. We're going to we're going to we're going to emphasize manhood and we're going to emphasize um, the word of God with each other and we're going to have a campfire and a cookout and he said we could have a handgun range up there. So we're really looking forward to that as well. It's a great time for all the guys to get together and just have some fellowship and a time in the word and prayer together. So hope that all the guys can make it. And then the women are meeting the very next week at 4 p.m. This is the second uh, of our monthly coffee meetups for the women's ministry. And they really said it was just a great time the, uh, back last month. And so we're bringing it back. We'll do it again. So and that only is about an hour. It's Sunday afternoon at 4 o'clock. All the women are invited to meet together at uh, Tunnel City Coffee in Williamstown. It's just a relaxed time of fellowship and connection, great opportunity to get to meet new people, and, and, a, and just a relaxed, welcoming environment with lots of caffeine as well. So it should be, should be, and there will be no handguns at that event. So good, good point. Well said. Well said. Um, oh, boy. And then, of course, uh, we more details to come on our next Young at Heart group and our next Young Adult group uh, in the month of July. The other thing I'll say is we are looking for some more volunteers for different ministries. Uh, we've got lots of folks serving our church in many different ways. On that connection card, you can just mark that little box, I want to volunteer, and we'll get you some information. Or you can check out the welcome table, and we'll plug you into the ministry some way where you can have a part. And uh, that's, that is awesome. Camp, we had a whole group of campers already signed up last week, and there's still room if you want to sign up for Camp Sunday. I'm excited. Uh, Pastor Aaron, Pastor Eric, and I are heading up to the camp property tomorrow to have a meeting with the other churches and check out and plan for camp. So um, I know a lot of this front row is pretty excited about camp. So we're going we're gonna to have a good time. Um, so be praying for camp. And then I want you to be praying about our Wednesday night kids clubs. And of course, we have Bible study and growth groups that night. Our Wednesdays have been fantastic. The awards night is something brand new that we've never done to kind of end the year and get ready to kick off the summer. But we are going to recognize all these boys and girls that come on Wednesday nights. We're going to promote some of them from the kids club to the youth group. It's just going to be an amazing uh, just capstone to everything that has taken place this year. So I know Wednesdays can be difficult. You, you, you work all day, and, but if you can make it, um, the, everything will get started. The kids start at 6, but the whole program will start at 6.30. And hope you come and just congratulate these boys and girls and just get a vision for there's so many boys and girls that you, if, if you just come on Sunday, you never see some of these kids that ride in on our bus on Wednesday nights and just uh, it's amazing so this is one Wednesday night I would just encourage you to be here be a part of it and, um, and it's gonna be a special special night and then the last thing it's not till the month of July but we are planning a special weekend with Pastor Dave Tice from uh, Las Vegas Nevada and he is a uh, was one of a mentor of, uh, was a mentor of mine in college and through the years watching his ministry, and he is going to come and share with us just from the Word of God all weekend long. So set those dates aside. Friday afternoon and evening, or, or Friday afternoon, we'll have some special sessions for the men. So if you guys can take an afternoon off, I would put that on your calendar now. I hope that all the men can be here for that. We're also inviting pastors from all over the region so there'll be pastors here and it's going to be a special afternoon and then we are going to have an evening service for the whole church and we're going to have a barbecue dinner for the whole church a special gathering that night at 6 30 for the for the preaching and the worship time it's going to be awesome and so don't let anything stop you uh, from that and then sunday 
Uh, we'll, kick, we'll, we'll finish it all off with a special service Sunday morning and church picnic at my house. So mark that date. It's about six weeks away, but put it on your calendar and let's make that a priority. Let's make it a priority that weekend. Just give that to the Lord, right? I mean, we'll give, summer gets busy, there's a lot of events. But if we can dedicate that weekend to Jesus, I know that he will bless us. I know there'll, there'll be something. So please do be praying about that. All right, let's uh, prepare for our offering this morning. We thank the Lord for how he prepares or how he provides for us and be praying for the Thornton family, our missionaries in Argentina. Each week we highlight one of our missionaries. Please be praying for them. And we're going to ask God to bless our offering today. Uh, I'm going to ask Travis, will I, would you come and just use the microphone and come and ask the blessing on our giving, whether you give online or you give in the offering box, either way, it is a way for us to honor the Lord in our worship. So Travis, lead us in prayer, please. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for every day. Thank you for this church. Thank you for the ability to come here and worship the Lord. And as an act of worship, we just give a portion of what you've given us back to you, Lord. We just pray that you'd use it wisely here at Mount Greylock and that the money that would go out to our missionaries, like the Thorntons, Lord, that it would just help draw us closer to you. We love and thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand together one last time as we sing his mercy is more. Darkness new every morning.
Let's take our Bibles today and turn to Matthew chapter 20. That song, Our Sins, They Are Many, His Mercy Is More. We've, we've been having at 930, we've got different Bible study groups, as most of you are aware of. And I've been leading a small group of uh, newer Christians or people that are re-engaging their faith. It's our Growth Track 101. And we talked about that today, just that the, just the amazing fact that our sins are many. And if the scale is weighted over here for all of the sins we've committed against God, the scale is weighted this way. Sometimes we try to fill this side up with what? Nice actions going to church, but what we talked about today, and the, the, the problem is that, is any of that going to tip the scale enough? It's not going to work. But as soon as you put Jesus on this side of the scale, as soon as you put the Lord over here, the, the, the weight is tipped in the balance. It makes the difference. And so our sins are many, but aren't you thankful that the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ is far greater than any of our sins? And um, just to share that truth with people studying the Bible and in depth sometimes for the first time is just so exciting. Well, the text I have for you all this morning is Matthew chapter 20, and we're, we're working our way through the Gospel of Matthew, thinking about being part of God's kingdom. If we know Jesus as our Savior, we do not belong to the kingdom of this world. We belong to the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so it's a privilege, it's an honor to know the Lord, to be a part of his kingdom. In fact, let's say our theme verse together. We'll put it on the screen. It's Matthew chapter 6 and verse number 33. Would you shout this out together with me? Are you ready? Here we go. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. If we put Jesus first, he takes care of all the things in our life, and good to be a part of his kingdom. Well, today I want to focus on Jesus and that he is our king of grace. He is our king of grace. Let's read the first verse of our, of our passage today, Matthew 20, and we'll start, we're going to read 16 verses, but I want to start with just verse number 1. Verse number 1 of Matthew 20, for the kingdom of heaven is is two words. What are they? The kingdom of heaven is like unto. So if you're taking notes this morning, cue up, write it down. We are about to hear a parable. What are we about to hear? Parable. Now, if you're new to the faith, a parable is simply a story that illustrates a truth. So Jesus says, my kingdom is like this story that I am about to tell you. So the parable is simply a story that's going to teach us something about God and something about Jesus. It's like an illustration. So Jesus is about to tell us a parable. The kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder. Now, householder here is not like, you know, some just... You know, you own a piece of property. A householder is somebody that has a significant land holding. Somebody with a significant piece of property. That's what a, that is what the householder is here. So the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder. Now, it says that he went out early in the morning... To hire laborers into his vineyard. So, the householder has a piece of property, and on that property is what, let's see if you're paying attention, is what agricultural environment? He has a, he's got a vineyard. He's growing grapes. Common, this was a common agricultural endeavor of the day. And so it's early in the morning, and as was common in the day, they would hire day laborers. They wait all season for the crop to come in, and maybe it's time now to start to harvest. And so this story is he goes, and he finds people willing to work for the day. I wonder if there's anybody that's done that at any point in your life. You've been hired day labor before, something like that. Okay, yeah, that's been a, that's been a thing where it's like, all right, you find some work for the day. Um, and I'm looking, I, when I was young, there, sometimes I 
wanted to make some extra money, I'd say, all right, what do you need done? And uh, go do a project for somebody or something like that. So he's saying, imagine day laborers, people that are ready to go and work the day. Well, why would Jesus be telling this story? What is this all about? Well, if you notice on your handout, we need to get a little bit of context from what we studied last week. Last week, in the verses just before this, because remember, we're building every verse upon the previous verses. We're studying Matthew chronologically here. Previously, there was just a discussion between Jesus and his disciples about the rewards that they would get for following him. They had asked a question. Peter said, Jesus... We have left our lives, and we have followed you. So what is going to happen to us? And if you look on your handout, in Matthew 19, Jesus said this to Peter and the disciples. Everyone that has forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. But... Many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. So there's this passage that just happened where Jesus says, if you follow me with your life, there will be a reward. But people that want to be first in my kingdom are going to end up what? Last. And the people that are willing to be last are going to be first. And then he says, so, so they're like, okay. And the disciples were like you and me sometimes. They're, it's not all clicking. You know, it's like, the last shall be first, the first shall be. I mean, we've heard that saying, Jesus originated. So they're like, the last, first, first, last. But let me tell you what Jesus says. There was a man who hired laborers for his vineyard. Now, the big idea that you're going to see this morning, the main idea is this. The kingdom of Jesus operates by grace, not by merit. So that's the main thing from this whole message. The kingdom of Jesus operates by what? By, by grace, not by merit. So again, if you take notes under grace, I would put grace is what God gives. Let's, I don't mean to treat you like elementary school, but would you say it with me? Grace is what? Grace is what God gives. Merit is what I do. Okay? So on the one side, we've got grace. Grace is what God gives. Merit is what I do. Now, many people have a misunderstanding of Christianity, and they have a misunderstanding of the kingdom of God, because they think that being a Christian is all about over here, which is merit, which is, merit is what I do. But Christianity is not about merit, Christianity is about grace, which is what God gives. What God gives versus what I do. And so Jesus uses this parable and he illustrates that the last are first and the first are last. And the kingdom of heaven is about grace, it's not about merit. And each and every one of us should be so grateful that it is not about merit. Because if it was about merit, I would never know if I had done enough for God. I could never rest. And some of you may have grown up in a religious background where you went to bed at night and you thought, oh, I hope I don't die tonight. Pray the Lord my soul to keep. If, you know, if I die, I hope I haven't, I hope I've done enough good things. Anybody who grew up with that kind of mindset? You went to bed at night. Thank you. You went to bed at night and you thought, I hope I've done enough good things that God has accepted me. But for the child of God who understands the teachings of Jesus and has received him as their savior, you can rest your head on your pillow at night knowing it's not up to what you've done, but it's by his grace. It's by his grace and it's by his goodness. So let's dive into, dive into the story. First of all, if you flip over your notes this morning, number one, we are all invited into the kingdom by grace. Number one, we are invited by grace. Here in chapter 20, look at verse number two. So remember, he goes and he looks for day laborers for his vineyard. Verse number two, and when he had agreed with the laborers for 
a penny a day. How many of you would work for a penny a day, right? Anybody volunteers? If I had a, a job offer for you? Well, this is older English. Uh, some of you may have a note in your Bible. A penny a day is, in that day and age, this was equivalent to one day's wages, okay? So I will give you a day's wages. By our standards today, maybe he's hiring day laborers for $20 an hour at a 10-hour at a, uh, at a day working in the fields. So $200 at the end of the day, you will get paid. And so the guys are like, yeah, sure, let's do it. Now, who is the one who is the one who is taking the initiative in this situation? Did they come knocking on his door? Is that what happened? No. He has a vineyard. He is calling people to labor in his vineyard. So the household or the master, he is the one that is going and he is searching out and he is inviting people to join him in his work. And listen, God is still doing the same thing today. He has this kingdom, and he is accomplishing his work in the world, and he is moving in people's lives, and he is changing hearts, and he is changing lives, and he's restoring what is broken, and he's bringing in a harvest, and Jesus right now is coming among the humanity in the, in the form of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is coming, and he's inviting us to come and be a part of his work in the world. And if you've, if you've signed up, so to speak, if you said yes, it's the most exciting thing you, that you've ever been a part of, being a part of God's work in the world. But it's Jesus who takes the initiative. It's God who takes the initiative by his grace. The Bible says that there, are, there is no one who on their own seeks after God. In fact, we are born into this world as sinners. We are born into this world, um, we're born into this world really wanting to do our own thing. We've got our own vineyard. We've got our own agenda. We've got our own plans. And so we're not interested in God, but by his grace, he calls each of our hearts and he says, I don't want you to be focused on yourself. I want to invite you into what I am doing. God, by his grace, invites us. The Bible says in Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. Some of you have these verses memorized. They're wonderful verses. Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. If I stop, would you just provide that next word good and loud? For by are ye saved. This is the invitation. This is the invitation. By grace, God says you can be what? You can be saved. You can be saved. And that's not through what you do, but it's through what? For by grace you are saved through faith. Not of, not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. It is a gift of grace by which he calls people to himself. It is the gift of God. Verse number 9 now. Not of, not of works. Not the merit. Not what you do. Because then we could be what? We would be boasters and proud. Oh, remember, the first shall be last, and the last shall be first. It's being a part of God's kingdom isn't about my works, because then I could be a boaster and say, God, look at everything I've done for you. Nope. Not of works, lest any man should boast. However, look at verse number 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, Unto good works. So here it is. We do not enter the relationship with God by works. But once we enter into that relationship, then what do we go out and do? What's God's plan for us? Good works. Good works is not the, the beginning of our Christian faith. Our Christian faith starts by faith. And then it continues. God gives us power to do good works. Works God had before ordained that we should walk in them. We are invited freely apart from our works. He just comes and knocks on the door of our heart and says, I want you to come belong to me. And one day you heard the voice of God in your heart, not with your ears out loud, but in your heart, you heard God knocking on your heart's door and calling you. And that moment you said yes to him, he forgave all your sins, and then he says, 
Now I want you to go to work in my vineyard. See, he saved us freely apart from our works, but he didn't invite us to be idle. Do you catch that? Here's the, here's the awesome thing about being a Christian. We were not invited to be like, okay, saved by grace. Go ahead, verse number eight, back up again. All right, I am saved by grace, nothing I do, so now I'm just going to sit back in my recliner, put the TV on, and you know, binge watch my favorite show until Jesus takes me to heaven. That's not the plan. The Christian life is so much more exciting than that because God's bringing in a harvest. And it's not grace. What is the fruit of the harvest? It's souls. It's people. It's lives changed. And God says, hey, I didn't just save you by grace to change your life, but I saved you by grace to change other lives, to make a difference in other people. So we join God in his work in the vineyard. Are you with me so far? You follow me? Okay? That's the Christian life. We're invited. But now secondly, number two, not only are we invited by grace, but then we are empowered by grace. We are empowered by grace. Now, let's read a little bit more of these, these guys. Verse number, verse number two, when he agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. Go to work. Go to work now. And he went about the third hour. Now, the day started at 6 a.m. You worked a long day. And so in the Jewish calendar, 6 a.m. is the first hour. So now the third hour, let's see how, how, how we're doing with our ancient timetables. What time of day is it now, third hour? 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock. So at the third hour... Oh, you're right. It could be 8 o'clock. I heard Cal's like giving me a face right there. It's either 8 or 9 o'clock. All right, we're going to go with that. In the morning still, at the third hour, he looks and he sees others standing what? Idle in the marketplace. All right? So anybody ever stood idle or hung? They're just, so let's put this in modern English. He looked and he saw them just hanging around in the marketplace. And here's another thing. You were not created in the image of God with talents, abilities, and, and, and skills and personality. You were not created to spend your life hanging around. God created you with a purpose. God created you to accomplish something for his glory. And so he goes into the vineyard and he sees these guys. And what are they doing? They're just standing around. Just standing around, doing nothing. And he says, I've got something for you guys. I want you to come and work. Verse number four, he said, hey, why don't you go into the vineyard too? You go into the vineyard too. And I tell you what, whatever's right at the end of the day, I'm going to pay you. Now, how much is he going to pay them? Now, don't tell me if you read the story already. Just be with me like you never read the story. So up until now, how much do we think he's going to pay them? Who knows? You, you think he's going to be a penny? Well, the, the first people was the penny. They've already been working for how many hours though? Like three hours. And now these guys are going to go, and, and does he give them, does he tell them how much he's going to pay them? No. That's a job offer for you. Any of you that are managers, can you imagine hiring somebody? Well, what are you going to pay me? Oh, we'll figure it out at the end of the day. Well, that's what he says. He's like, see how, you're, see how your uh, people respond to your interviews with that one there. So, okay. They went their way. They get to work. No more standing idle. They get to work in the marketplace. Verse number five. I went out about the sixth hour. And the ninth hour. And he sees more people just doing what? Just standing around. And he says, there's more planned for your day than this. I've got to, you don't know how to fill up your day? I'll fill up your day for you. And so he says, I, I, like, this is kind of how I grew up. This is like my dad. If you were just standing around, he found something for you to do. How many of you had a parent like that? You know what I'm talking about? There's no standing around. There's something for you to do today. My daughter just raised her hand and gave me a smirk. So yes. So he says, let's go. But you know, you know how meaningless your life is without purpose, don't you? Right? You're like, well, I don't know. I kind of like fetching around. You, you know what I'm saying? So he gives them purpose. He gives them a mission. He sends them to work. And they do it. Verse number six. And about... The 11th 
hour. How many hours are left in the day of work now? I'm giving you a hint. <laughs> One hour left to work. And he says, have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? And they said in verse number seven, well, nobody would hire us. Okay, now I'm going, I don't, this is me now. Can't say this with the authority of scripture. So I'm just going to give you that. This is me now and my thinking through this. I wonder why they didn't get hired. Right? Maybe they weren't the best workers. Is it possible? Which at least, I, again, I'm not saying the Bible is saying this. This is just my thinking about this and kind of making an application. They sit there all day. They didn't get hired. I wonder why. Maybe they weren't the best workers. Who knows? Either way, with only one hour left in the day, most of the work has already been done. Most of the work's already been done. But he says to these guys who are just standing around, you know what? I want you to go to work in my vineyard too. One hour left. And at the end of the day, I'll pay you whatever is right. Now they show up. At the end of the day, here they are. And who else is there looking at them show up? All the other workers from earlier in the day. They're like, oh, where have you been? They're like, oh, how can we help up? And maybe they're just there to help clean up the wagons and put the stuff away. And they just get the very last part of the workday. Because can I, can I explain something? The true master, the true householder, God the Father, Jesus Christ, who we're talking about, how many of us does he actually need to accomplish his harvest? None of us. He doesn't need us. He, God is sovereign. God is almighty. God is not in heaven like, what am I going to do? They didn't volunteer for the serve teams at the church. How will the mission go forward? God's not worried about that. Because God is going to accomplish his purpose. God is going to do his work in the world. But he invites willing people. The work is not about us. You see, what we do for God is even an act of his grace. It's all empowered by his grace. Because whether a person works for an hour, three hours, six hours, nine hours, or the whole 12-hour day... The whole time, anything that we accomplish in God's kingdom is accomplished only by his working in us. We don't do it anyway. In fact, let me give you another scripture on that. I'm not sure if we have this. Philippians chapter number two, we do. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Two words. What do they say? Work out. Put to work your own salvation with fear and trembling. So this is what God says. You have been saved. Is there anybody in here that could say, yes, I've been saved? Amen? Okay, so you've been saved. God's plan, as we said before, is for you to now work that salvation out. You will shrivel up on the vine as a Christian. You will lose your purpose. You will lose your joy if you never work out your salvation. If you don't put it to work in, in transformational ways with the Holy Spirit's power, you are going to have a boring, dry life as a Christian. Because you were created to work out your salvation. Not work for your salvation, but now that you've received it, you work it out. You're like, well, Ethan, that kind of sounds like it's up to me. It kind of sounds like a merit thing. What do you mean it's by grace? He says right there, work it out, work it out. That sounds... Wouldn't, would you agree that that kind of sounds like merit there, not grace? Well, fortunately, there's a verse that follows. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is. It's God who is working in you. This is Christianity. 
Every good thing I do as a Christian, who gets the glory? Because who gave me the power to do it? God did. Now, can I do things on my own? Can I try to impress God with my good works? I sure can. But is he pleased with those works? No. It must be done for his glory by his power. Work out your salvation because it is God working in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. We are invited by grace. We are empowered by grace. Thirdly now, we are rewarded by grace. This is my favorite part of the story and I think you'll see why. Back to the vineyard now. Flashback to the vineyard. They're hot. They're tired. They're sweaty. They're dirty. How many of you have worked manual labor jobs in your day? Right? Come home, and I was, a, I was in landscaping for like six years, digging holes, <laughs> pulling weeds, mowing grass. You come home, you're hot, you're tired, you're stinky, you're wore out. These are day laborers in the vineyard. They've been looking forward to something all day long. They get to the end of their work day and they walk up to the steps of the door because now it's time to get what? Get paid. Get paid. And they're day laborers, so they probably already spent that money somewhere, right? Like it's, it's already spent, it's the money, and they've worked hard and they've earned it, and it's time to get paid. So when evening was come, the Lord of the vineyard says to the steward, He says, hey, manager, go get, all those, go get all those guys that were working and let's pay them, beginning from the, the last. Remember what Jesus is saying? The last shall be first. The first shall be last. I want you to go and pay everybody. Now, I'm sure there, the, can you imagine the crowd? I, I know how I would be. They say, okay, just give me the money and let me go home. I just want to go home, I just want to go to bed. And so all of a sudden, the steward is there, the manager's there, and he's like, hey guys, gather around, we got to pay for you, we got to pay, and he takes out that big bag of coins, and they're all lined up in front of him, and he's like, oh, no, 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 you guys in the back, you come on out first. Now, I'm like, is he for real? Really? Whatever, whatever, you know, okay. And the guys from the back, starts with the guys who had worked how many hours? Just one hour. And they, when they came, verse 9, and when they came that were hired about the 11th hour, they received every man a penny. Now remember, a penny is day's wages. They got a full day's pay for how many hours of work? One hour. Now, the question is this. What is your reaction to that? I heard it. Who said it? Yeah, what was that? It's not fair. That's not fair. How many of you, if you were there in that situation, that was your employer, you would feel in that moment, that's not fair. Right? I think all of us would. I mean, there might be some spiritual giants out there that are just truly happy for these guys. Right? And, and you, you, know, you can teach next week. All right? But this week, you're just stuck with me. All right? And I'd be like, well, that's not fair. Or my other reaction might be like, what would my other reaction be? Hmm, I wonder if, I wonder if I'm going to get more. Yeah, I'm going to get more if he's paying them for an hour. I'm thinking like, you know, I'm, I'm buying other stuff. I'm swiping the credit card. You know, I'm moving forward now, right? Like, oh, there's going to be more. And he works all the way through in verse number 10. But when the first came, they supposed that they should have received what? More. Because after all, that would be only fair. Now, Jesus isn't saying this is how life should work. You understand? He's saying this is how what works. You remember from the very beginning? This is how what works. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. Because God's kingdom takes our world's kingdom and turns it upside down. 
We are physically minded so often. And Jesus is trying to break through our physical, material mentality and teach us spiritual truths. This isn't like advice for Christian employers out there, you know. This is not good business practice. But this is how the kingdom works. So my question would be, why? Well, let's think through it, though. So they think they should have received more, and they likewise also got just the day's wages. Verse 11, and when they had received it, they what? Murmured. Everybody murmur. One, two, three, go. You're good at that. Yeah. Most human beings are really good at that. It comes naturally to us. That's a, it's like one of those onomatopoeia words where it's like murmur. It's like complaining, griping. Oh, these guys are saying, oh, this isn't fair. That's not fair. That's, this is not right. Where's the justice? This is not right. How do you do this to us? They murmur against now... Jesus doesn't call him the master or the Lord. He calls him the what? The good man. The good man of the house. And they murmured saying, now they're vocal about it. These last have worked, but how long? But only one hour. And you have made them what? Equal. What are they doing? They're making themselves what? Judges. They're judging the worth of one another. They're, they're viewing the service that they are doing to the master as this great value. And in a human economy, would they be right? Of course, in a human economy, they would be right. You've made them equal to us, which have borne the burden and the heat of the day. Do you know what we've been through? Verse 13, but he answered and he said to them, friend, even when we complain and gripe, Jesus calls us friend. Friend, I'm not doing anything wrong to you. Didn't you agree to work for the day's wages? Verse 14, take what is yours and go your way. I'm going to give to the last the same I give you. After all, verse 15, isn't it lawful for me to do what I will with my own? Whose money is it? Whose vineyard is it? Whose agreement? His, his. It's all his. Is your eye evil? This was an old idiom, an evil eye. It's just the idea of, you get it. I mean, you can feel it. Is your eye evil? Because I am what? Good. Leave that verse up. What they could not see is that this has nothing to do with fairness at all. It's actually all about grace. It's all about grace. Because grace, because grace says, grace says that I will give to you even though you do not deserve it. Did they deserve to get paid that well for one hour of work? No. But in a human economy, that's unjust. So what makes it so right in the spiritual economy? Because in the grand cosmic scheme of God and humanity, our efforts of a day's work, so to speak, what do they amount to to God? Even the very best person who dedicates their whole life and from the time they are young to the time they are old, they are faithful and obedient and they serve the church and they serve others and they give of themselves and they give of their money. They live the exemplary Christian life. Is that wonderful? Yes. Is there a blessing for that? Of course there is. But in the scheme of who we are in our sin and who God is, what is even a whole life to God in his eternal holiness? It's nothing. It's nothing. The great wonder of the kingdom of heaven is that he would reward any of us. So we do not compare our reward to others. You may be here, in fact, and you may have made a lot of mistakes in your life. 
You may come to church. I had a conversation with somebody about this recently. You come to church and you see all the people in their church clothes and singing their church songs and, and, and doing all the church things. And you may think in your mind, oh, those people have it all together. Those are the people that, of course, God is pleased with them. And, and I just, I don't know if I could even keep coming to this church, not because you don't like it, but because you don't feel worthy for some reason. I've got news for you. If, you, if we could only pull back the curtain, you would just see a whole group of unworthy people. If you could, everybody's got history, and everybody's got past. And sure, there may be some people that have been here for 20, 30, or 40 years, and there may be some people that have been here for an hour, literally. It's their first time ever. And you may be here, and you've got a squeaky clean past. You may be here, and you may even have a criminal record. You may have scars. You may have terrible things you've done in your past. But I've got news for you. None of us are being rewarded by God because of any of that. It's only by His grace. And if you would just, even in this late hour of your life potentially, even if you're older and you've just got hours left in your life, if you will give your heart to Jesus and you will say, Jesus, I made a whole mess of my whole life, but today I'm giving it to you. Guess what? The last shall be first and the first shall be last. And great is your reward in heaven. Jesus said in Luke chapter 12, verse 32, Fear not little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Jesus invites all of us by his grace. He doesn't invite us to just stand around and be idle. Sure, he's got work to do, but that work isn't what pleases him. It's our, the humbleness, the humility of our hearts, where we say, yes, Lord, I'm surrendered to you. I'm not worthy of you, but I believe in you. I trust you, and now sign me up. I'll go to work in your vineyard. I'll give my life to you. I'll walk with you. I'll belong to you, Jesus, because I understand it's not about me. It's all about him. Give him praise this morning. Amen. Amen. Rewarded by grace. And let me finish with this. Verse number 16. Verse number 16. So the last shall be first, and the first shall be last, for many be called, but few chosen. Now this phrase, Jesus actually says this twice in the New Testament. So it occurs in Matthew 20. It occurs, I think, in Matthew chapter 22 as well. He says, For many be called, but few chosen. First shall be last, the last shall be first, for many be called and few chosen. That's another enigma of Jesus' speech. In fact, some Bible scholars have questioned, does this, does this, you know, these linguistic experts are like, well, does this verse really belong here? Maybe it, maybe it was only in Matthew 22, and you may have a translation that doesn't even include that there. Jesus said it twice, though, and it, it certainly belongs here. The last shall be first, the first shall be last, for many be called, but few chosen. What does this mean? What is the point? He goes into the vineyard. He goes into the vineyard, and he invites people to work. The problem is this. There are some people who hear the invitation of Jesus, but there's too much pride in their hearts. There's too much merit. Remember where we began? There's merit and there's grace. And there are literally people, I have known them, who literally would have just heard that message that I just gave, where I say, it doesn't matter if you work an hour for God, or if you work a whole life for God, he will accept you the same equally by his grace. There are people that hear that and they say, I cannot accept that. Because I think I can do enough good works to please God. And so what do they do? They take on religion. Or they take on philosophy and they try to build their lives in a way that they respect themselves and they honor themselves and they say, God will accept me for what I've done for him. It's called self-righteousness. And, and we human beings are filled with self-righteousness. When God calls, we can only receive with humility. And so many are called, but the only ones who are chosen 
are the ones whose hearts are soft and whose hearts will respond in faith and say, Jesus, yes. I am not worthy to work in your vineyard. I'm not worthy of salvation, but I want you to save me right now. I am a sinner. I'm lost, but I believe in you. Has that ever happened in your life? Has there been a moment in your life where you have seen yourself not as an impressive person, but as an unworthy person who just needs grace? And in that moment, you said, Jesus, I ask you to be my Savior. If that has never happened, I'm going to invite you in just a moment to do that today. Today, you can begin your relationship with Jesus. Jesus is inviting you. He's calling you. There's two groups of people here today. There's a group of people who have already said yes to Jesus. And there's a group of people that are on the fence. They've not done it yet. God is speaking to your heart right now. He's inviting you. Will you let go of your pride and give your heart to Jesus? What we're going to do now is we're going to make our spiritual decisions. We're going to have a quiet moment where we go to prayer. I ask if, ever, if possible, nobody, unless there's an emergency, please don't get up or leave during this time because this is a really important time in the service because this is the time where you think about what's been said from the Bible, you listen to God in your heart, and you make a decision. You make a decision. So would you go to prayer with me right now? Please bow your heads. Please close your eyes. Remember, there's two groups of people. First of all, there's people in here. You'd say, Pastor Ethan, I am 100% sure. I mean, positive. There is no question in my mind that there has been a time in my life where I've received Jesus as my Savior. I'm positive. Not a shred of doubt. If that's you, could you not hear? Your head say yes I'm 100% sure okay so I'll just talk to you for a minute and then I'm going to focus on those who aren't sure but if you are sure don't be I'll say this make a decision today to not be idle but to be used of God in the way that he has planned for you okay now is there somebody here that would say pastor Ethan I couldn't nod my head because I am not sure I am not sure that I have received Jesus as my Savior. That's me. Did you nod your head right now and say, I'm just not sure. Yeah, that's me. Okay? Thank you. See that? All right. And how many of you would say, I would like to make sure today I'm ready right now to put my faith in Jesus? Yeah? Okay. So let me just ask you a question. Do you admit to God that you're a sinner? Do you? Okay. Amen. Do you believe that Jesus died for your sins on the cross? He died for you on the cross. Okay? Thirdly, do you believe that Jesus rose from the dead? Yes, I do. Okay. I see heads nodding with me. Praise the Lord. Now, you only have to make this decision one time in your life, and you will belong to Christ. Only one time in your life do you have to give your heart to him. But you must do it actively. It doesn't happen on its own. So if that's you, there's only one thing left to do. The Bible says that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The Bible says that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So all you have to do is tell Jesus, yes, I believe. Yes, I trust you. You don't have to use the words, but you just have to tell them that your faith is in him. So I'm going to lead you in a prayer right now. And if you're ready at this moment to, put, to make sure that your faith is in Christ once and for all, it's a one-time decision to place your faith in Jesus. If you're ready to do that, I just ask you to whisper this prayer with me right now. Just whisper it so only you and God can hear. Pray something like this. Say, dear Lord, dear Lord, I admit to you that I am a sinner and I cannot myself. But I believe that you died for me, and I believe that you rose from the dead. Right now, I ask you to save me. I put my full faith in you. 
I'm not trusting myself. I'm not trusting a church. Jesus, I'm trusting you. Now, if you made sure this morning you prayed that, I won't call your name out, I won't embarrass you or do anything at all like that, but I do want to pray for you privately. Every week, for the last few weeks, we've had people respond to the gospel. If God spoke to, to that message of Jesus, if God spoke to your heart this morning, you just made sure, you put your faith in Christ, would you just very quickly and quietly slip your hand up and put it down so I can pray for you? Anybody at all? Thank you. Anybody else? Right now, I just did that. Yes, amen. Amen. Praise God. It's wonderful. Praise the Lord, church. Amen? Amen. If you did that this morning, now maybe you had already done that and you just wanted to make sure. It's faith that saves you. But if that was your first time and you, this was the moment, the Bible says you now have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, Look this way now, please. Maybe you're here and you weren't ready to do that. Maybe this is still new to you. That's fine. We want to help answer questions. All we do here at Mount Greylock Baptist Church is what Christians have done for 2,000 years. We take the Bible, we explain it to people, and we show them how they can know Jesus. That is it. And if you have questions, if you would like to know more, let's talk sometime. Grab coffee or talk in the church or something. You say, I just want to understand that I know Christ. It's the most important decision you could make in your whole life. Whole life. Christians, let's just take this quiet moment now and you pray. Just ask God, how does he want you to work in here? So heads bowed, eyes closed, just for the last quiet moment. You know how God spoke to you. It's not going to be long. They're just going to play a verse and then we're going to sing. But take a minute and just surrender whatever, however God spoke to your heart. Surrender it to him. Lord, we thank you for how you speak to us. We thank you that you are in this house. We thank you that you love us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's sing together as we sing the house of the Lord. We worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who has.
today, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise, there's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's not just joy in the house of the Lord, but the Bible says that God is happier when one person finds repentance and faith than when a hundred people live righteous lives. Because God saves. The Bible says that when one sinner finds salvation, it literally says there is joy in the presence of the angels. And it is, it, it, I said at the beginning that People have made life-changing spiritual decisions several weeks in a row in our church. We saw it again this morning. Could you give God praise this morning? Amen. And just don't, don't miss out on what God is doing among us. This is what we're called to be. And we rejoice together. We're just excited. If you made a decision today, big decision, small decision, we rejoice with you. We're excited for it. Please be seated. Um, the last thing we're going to do, I'm going to invite Pastor Eric and Shelley to come. Um, we have a moment right now to recognize Trinity Flynn, soon to be Trinity, oh, what's your new last name going to be? Davis. And Trinity is, I'm not going to say the speech, Pastor Eric's going to, and the reason for that, some of, a lot of you are new to our church, there's a special relationship between our church and Trinity, and especially between Pastor Eric and Shelley, those that are, are new, new to the church. This is also happens to be my dad and mom for all of, the, <laughs> for all of you who are, we, we have new people. I forget everybody doesn't know that, but they've had a special relationship all the years with Trinity and they're both going to share a few words and then we're going to pray a prayer of dedication. We need that picture. There's so many good shots up here. Trinity, you haven't even seen this yet. I mean, there's just all kinds of, all kinds of great stuff. I don't know what was going on over here. I think that was a minute to win it. Uh, but just different experiences with Trinity and our church all these years. How old were you when you came? Was it eight years old? Uh, yeah, eight, about eight. Amen. There may be some tears from this guy right There here. will be. <laughs> so Trinity, I've watched you grow up in church, um, in church and out of church, spend a lot of time with my daughters, and spend a lot of time in our house. And you have a wonderful, supportive family. But I've always felt like an extra auntie to you. Um, you have a love for people. Uh, it's contagious. And I know God's going to use you in Florida in a mighty way, you and your husband. Um, and I look forward to this new chapter in your life. And um, I just want to say something else about what the pastor preached this morning about you walk in this church and you think, wow, all these people are, they got it together. We didn't always have it together. And Trinity has really got an open heart to people that don't have it together. And that's a real blessing. And I love it. I'm going to miss you. But I'm really excited for you. Well, I was driving to church uh, one morning, early in the morning, and um, as I often did with our bus ministry, I just kind of drive around town. Kids were getting ready to go to school, so I looked for little spots where these kids were getting around, and I thought, I, I would always call them fishing holes. And Jesus said, go out and be fishers of men. And so I was going past Crossy Place one morning, and there's this whole group of kids sitting out there waiting for the, for the school bus. So... On Saturday, when we would do our bus visitation, I thought, well, let's go over to Crossy Place and let's invite some of these kids to come. And um, as a little, as a little eight-year-old, 
uh, Trinity got on the bus with all the kids there, and uh, Trinity, I had no idea that he'd still be coming to church. I had no idea. I had no idea that morning when I picked you up that you'd become a best friends with my daughter and friends with all my daughters and my son, sons. I had no idea that uh, how many years now is it? What fourteen? How old are you now? Twenty four. About to be twenty five. About to be four. Almost fifteen years later that you'd still be here, and I had no idea that when you got on the bus that morning that you, God would be working in your life and you'd become a Christian school teacher. I had no idea that morning when you got on the bus that uh, on June 15th of 2024 I would be officiating your wedding. I had no idea that you'd be part of our family like Miss Mal just said, and um, sometimes when I was a young preacher, you would, you would hear other preachers say, if you, just, if you could just influence one life for Christ, it would all be worth it. But I'm thankful that we've influenced, God has used us to influence your life. And we love you, and we'll be praying for you, and Andrew's lucky to have you. And, uh, I'm looking forward to Saturday and, and, and being be married on Saturday and um, for what God has in store as you move on in the next chapter of your life. I know God's going to use you in a great way. And uh, as a church, we love you and we're so proud of you and we're so glad how God's been working in your life. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, thank you for... Thank you so much for your goodness to us and your love, and thank you for Trinity and all the years that we've uh, had to just love on her and to minister to her, and now, Lord, you've called her to minister to others, and, and, and we know that she's going to do a great job. We ask your blessing on her wedding coming up and uh, on her life with Andrew and the next chapter down in Fort, Fort Walton Beach teaching Christian school there. So just... Just bless the preparation for this coming Saturday and then bless their life together. In Jesus' name, we ask you to pray all these things. Amen. Amen. And uh, Trinity said, she told me last Sunday that they went down to Florida and met their new church and all that. She said she went to that, she was getting ready to go to that first church service. She told Andrew, she says, I don't want to find another church. I just want my church. And uh, that's a testimony to all of you. But then she walked in, and uh, God gave you a wonderful welcoming church family down there. So their gain and our loss. But you've got a, a good row of people there to keep bringing you back up here, too. So, And um, Julie, just great job raising your daughter. And uh, just a lot of respect for you. All right. Well, there's cake. Right, Aaron? There is cake downstairs, so if you'd like to, so Trinity, why don't you go ahead downstairs, and um, as you're dismissed, you can make your way, there's two sets of stairs, there's one that goes out the back, there's another set of stairs by the welcome table, if you'd like to go down and wish Trinity well, and have a piece of cake, that'd be great as we celebrate. Full hearts today, amen? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Let's pray. God, thank you for your love, thank you for grace, thank you for what you did today. In Jesus' name, amen. You're dismissed.